Hey everybody, Michael Simon here. How are you doing? We are on uh, day four of daily dinners, and this is just showing you how to make stuff out of your pan. I'm going to talk you through it, ask questions as I'm cooking, and I will answer them the best I can. I hope everybody is having a fantastic day, as good as a day as anyone could have today. One day at a time, guys, one day at a time. So today, we are going to make it's pork beans, but the way that we did it in the recipe, it's just going to be pick a meat, pick a bean. So whatever meat you have in your house, or it could have no meat at all, it could be a vegetarian dish to make it with tofu, is going to work. I can't believe I said it. I said it. You can make it with tofu. Uh, is going to work for you. I have a couple pork chops here that I had in the freezer, and I just thawed them out. I'm going to season them with some salt and pepper. And I have a pan on over medium high heat that we're going to let the pan get hot and then I'm going to add the pork and then we'll start cooking. Oh, it's over here. Sorry guys. I'm just using grapeseed oil. You could use any oil or fat uh, that you want in this preparation. Don't worry about which ones you have in house. They will all work fine. So once the pan gets hot and the fat gets hot, we're going to add our pork chops and you can hear the sizzle. And then I'm going to season the other side of these two with a little bit of salt. If you had spice and things of that nature that you wanted to use, you could put them on before they go in there. Sometimes I'll even brush them with mustard and then put them on kind of whatever you want. But your favorite rub, your favorite spice, doesn't have to just be salt and pepper. That's just what we're doing today. So a lot of questions people have been asking. Um, I am on a very low sodium diet. Can I use salt substitutes? Please do. I'm not here to be a doctor. You just got to keep your sodium down, use salt substitutes, and you're fine. So these pork chops are pretty good. Remember pork, you only have to cook it to about 150 degrees nowadays, uh, is what they recommend. So I'm going to put a hard sear on both sides, move them to a pan, put them in a really slow oven, and then we'll get our beans going. Um, when I was a kid growing up, my mom and dad, you know, we did, like, Pork chops were like pretty fancy. And my dad would make the same dish where I make doing the pork chops right now, he would fry up hot dogs. So if you got hot dogs, also very delicious because I grew up eating it that way. It was hot dogs and beans and it was one of my favorite meals of the week. We would get my mom's fancy lasagna on weekends. Sometimes during the week when dad was cooking hot dogs and beans and I loved it every time. Um, any questions, Liz? Emily's asking, how do you keep your pork chops juicy? How do you keep the pork chops juicy? You get them over a nice high heat, uh, give them a good sear on both sides, and don't cook them. I said 150, but you never really want to take it past 160 no matter what. Um, also, before you put them in, you know, these were frozen, so they're going to release a little bit of liquid, which it makes it harder to get a good sear. But make sure they're padded dry, too, before you put them in the pan so they don't steam, they actually sear. What else do we got, Liz? Um, a couple people are asking about onions. Does it matter what kind of onion or? No, pick an onion, any onion, any onion you can get your hands on. Red onion, white onion, yellow onion, leek, pearl onion, uh, shallot, scallion. Or if you can't find any onions and you can just find onion powder, use the onion powder instead. This is all about you guys getting food on the table. This is not judgy cooking. This isn't, you know, Iron Chef, someone's going to tell me what my score is. This is about getting delicious food on the table for your family with zero stress. There's a lot of stress going on right now. Everybody's stressed. I want to take the stress out of cooking for you. So if you don't have an ingredient, don't stress. I'll let you know the substitution. That's why the more questions you guys ask, either before or after, the better off we are. This is actually Donna's question. How did you know it was time to flip them? Well, I usually a couple minutes. And when I tug on them, if they release, usually that means they're caramelized. This isn't a nonstick pan. This is just a good quality pan. So once a piece of meat is caramelized, it'll release itself from the pan. You could also just take a peek in there and see if it's getting brown. You see these are really thin pork chops, so they're curling up. Mm -hmm. And because they were frozen, they're releasing a little bit of protein. That's fine. Don't worry. It's still going to be delicious. This is just what was available at my grocery store. So it's what I took. 
Um, Jasmine is asking, what's the best way to thaw pork chops before you cook them? Um, if they're wrapped really good, you can run them under cold water till they thaw. If you plan enough the day before, you could pull them from your freezer into your fridge and in 24 hours they should be thawed. So either of those methods will work. So now we get that sear on the other side. I'm gonna move these to my little pan here. I'm gonna put bacon in. Mm. Yeah, mm, smoky <laughs> bacon. Now, I'm putting in bacon. If you don't have bacon, not a deal breaker for the dish. Oven's at 275. It's just gonna finish these pork chops off. No worry there. If you don't have bacon, you don't have to have bacon in here. Maybe you have salami. You can put some salami in. Again, I mentioned hot dogs. Hot dogs could work here. Um, ham chopped up would go in. So, or you can make it vegetarian and you just omit that pork chop procedure. You see the tofu <laughs> and you put it there or you roast the vegetable in the pan and you put it there and you eliminate the meat part and we just go to the next step after that. So as this is crisping up, I'm just gonna give it a little stir real quick and we're gonna let this get pretty crispy. Um, Celine's asking what spices and herbs go well with pork that you could add in. With pork? Yep. So <clears throat> we've had a lot of, uh, you know, like I'll recommend a spice and people will be like, I don't have it. So I think when you guys look into your spice drawer today, decide what spices you have and which ones are your favorite. You will be surprised how many spices go with different things. Like with pork, um, cumin, coriander, uh, cayenne, chipotle, paprika, both sweet and smoky, mustard powder, uh, barbecue rubs, all those things go great. So whichever one you have, that's the one you should use. Um, or whichever one you like best, that's the one you should use. So that's really what we're trying to do here is use up what you have in your pantry. One, to save you a trip to go to the grocery store, which they're kind of crowded right now. And there is a little bit of stress when you go there because of everything that's going on. So if I could save you some of that stress from going, let's just use what you have and what you like. Also, celery salt, great with pork chops. Um, Old Bay, great with pork chops. So there's plenty of stuff out there that you might already have in your uh, drawer. Onion powder, powder, garlic powder, great with pork chops. You know, what I'm trying to say is pretty much everything's great with pork chops. So I did pork chops here, but you could also have done this with chicken breasts in the beginning or sausage. Now look, see our bacon, it's got nice and crispy. Mm. And that's just, you know, that was four strips of bacon that I diced up. Now I'm gonna put in my onions so they start to cook right in with all that yummy bacon and the fat that the bacon has rendered out, which is gonna become a big part of kind of our sauce for our bacon. So I'm gonna swirl this in. You don't have to season at this point because bacon has a lot of salt, which is gonna release itself into the onions, and then they're gonna kind of break down and sweat with that bacon. A couple people are saying that they are wondering how to get the pork chop to not curl. Is that a thing? Well, these were thin pork chops, so that's why they're curling. Um, it just, it's kind of a thing. You could take, uh, what you could do, you know, if I was doing thin pork chops, like say at the restaurant, I would, I would put a, a weight, you know, like you know, when you do brick chicken, you could wrap a brick in foil and put it on top of that, or they make the waste that you could put on top of that, or you could set another pan on top of it, that would stop the curl. Um, also, if you started them over maybe a little slower heat, it would slow the curl down, but they would probably still curl. So a weight would be the best way, but at the end of the day, they're still gonna be delicious. All right, so the onions are going. I'm gonna add two cloves of chopped fresh garlic. Again, garlic powder is fine. Now, I have a little bit of uh, just mixed spices. I have a friend of mine, Amy Mills, thank you very much, gave me some of their rub. So I'm just putting rub into my baked beans. But, you know, base, a basic rub is paprika, cayenne, mustard, onion powder. So they're all in there. 
but you could use any any of those spices that we talked about earlier work great in here. Um, we have a fan asking, how long do onions last? Um, onions last, if you keep them in a, a cool, dark place, onions and garlic will last for weeks. Hmm. Um, so they really have a pretty good shelf life. I, I, I have never, I don't do this or haven't done this, but friends of mine, people have told me that they dice onions when they're long on onions, they get them all diced and they put them in a container, put them in the freezer and they hold well. Remember though, when you freeze them, they're gonna add moisture and liquid. So when you cook them, that's gonna take a little bit longer. And on that note, we have uh, Labana asking about garlic in the jar. Oh, sorry, it's Larissa. All right, this is good, Larissa, because you're getting the, the, the I just wanna have you guys make great food for your family. I always say no, no chopped garlic, no peeled garlic, no garlic in the jar, get fresh garlic. Get any garlic that you have, use any garlic that you have. If it's peeled, if it's chopped, if it's diced, if it's roasted, if it's a paste, I don't care. I just want you to get a great meal on the table for your family. This is a non-judgmental, happy, happy cooking zone place. So I don't want you to be stressed that if you have this other kind of garlic that I don't have, use what you have. All right, look at those onions, they're great, don't they, Luke? Mmm, it smells really good. It smells good, good right? I yeah. mean, just that by itself smells good. Yeah. So to this, mm. now I'm going to add, um, I have my beans, wait, I'm doing this back. I'm going to add my <laughs> water first to get, now I put in the recipe, water, beer, wine, stock, all those work. But, I mean, let's face it, we don't want to waste the beer because we need it. Um... Stock, sometimes you don't have it or it takes a little bit of time to make. Water is going to work. There's tons of flavor in here with the bacon and the onions and the garlic and everything else that we're going to add. I also, because one of the bigger questions that I was getting was, um, Mike, I can't have tomatoes. I can't have, you know, you're using tomatoes, I can't have tomatoes. Put the beans in at this point and this is going to be delicious just how it is. If the other thing is that I've, been, I've used whole peel tomatoes. A lot of questions of, I have tomato sauce, pasta sauce. I have salsa, I have, can I use that? So, you know what, I went out, I got a little bit of salsa, and we're gonna make it with salsa. This is a spicy salsa. Mm, of um, course. You could use mild or any kind of salsa that you want, and you're putting it right in. And we did a little test run on these beans, and let me tell you, they were pretty good for, with the salsa. And that's gonna start to simmer. Tirsa has a question about um, why her meat gets tough and dry in a slow cooker. It won't, it, why it gets tough and dry in a slow cooker. If you use, it depends what kind of meat you're using. Some types of meats are meant to be cooked quick, not slow. Tenderloins, chops, things like that. Those aren't slow cooked meats. Meats that should be cooked slower, fat or tougher cuts, like a shank, a shoulder, um, a short rib. So you're, you may be using lean cuts and putting them into a, a slow cooker so it, they're gonna get tough and dry because of that. All right. This was two cans of baked beans, which I rinsed. A lot of people are saying I have dry beans at home. Dry beans are no problem. You just cook them um, in the water. I don't season my beans when I cook them from dry till they're done, because sometimes the salt will keep them hard, won't let them soften up for you. So we're just gonna let this go. Sean's wondering if he could add roasted red peppers to this. Yes, Sean, you can, absolutely. I think it will be delicious. Roasted red peppers, jalapeno peppers, different peppers, great. Red, yellow, green, pick a pepper, any pepper. <laughs> any other questions, Liz? Um, Adam is asking, what's the best way to reduce sauces to get them thick? Heat. So you saw, Sean, we, put the water, the salsa, all this stuff in here. Now I'm over medium high heat. As this reduces, it's gonna naturally thicken. The, I mean, there's tomatoes in here and the onions, so the beans, they're all gonna um, release their natural kind of starches and then the reduction is gonna cause thickness. So this is gonna thicken um, as it cooks and as it goes down. But I'm feeling really good about it right now. I'm gonna give this a taste. I get a spoon with it. I'm gonna give this a taste and then see where we are with seasoning and if I wanna add anything. The really other only things I have in the recipe right now is I have mustard and then I put sugar or maple syrup. 
I am not a super sweet guy, but if you like your beans a little bit on the sweet side, um, brown sugar, white sugar, coconut sugar, any kind of sugar you could add would work in this couple, you know, teaspoons or maple syrup and bacon go really good together. So if you wanted to sweeten them with maple, um, that would work. Also a good addition. Robin is asking if you save your veggie ends to make veggie stock. I do. I save my veggie ends to make stock in general. Um, if the pot over here, this is kind of working for tomorrow. We have, I just turned it off. I have some chicken stock going right there. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to save that chicken though, turn it into chicken salad. So that's going to be, that's a whole nother story that we have going over there. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, hot. <laughs> mm. Wow, really good. I'm gonna put a little, needs a little pinch of salt. I'm gonna turn the heat on just a touch. Well, empty. Jolene's asking if she wants to put in a can of corn, should she rinse it first? Um, can of corn. <laughs> yes. I'm, usually with canned stuff, I always rinse it first. But yeah, and you wouldn't want to put the corn in, Jolene, until once this is all kind of cooked at the end, put that corn in like the last minute or two. Because it's already cooked usually, it just needs to heat the rest of the way through and corn cooks really quick anyhow. If you wanted to add more veggies, same thing. You could add them at the last minute. So this is tasting good. I'm liking where we are with the thickness. I'm gonna put in about a quarter cup of mustard. Whatever mustard you have on house, this is a brown mustard, Cleveland mustard that I kind of grew up with. Is there such thing as mustard powder? I feel like I saw that in oh, a yeah, question. Oh yeah, mustard powder for sure, Liv, yes. Oh, <laughs> I, boy, I, I, live in the house. I felt like I saw that on a question. Yeah, no, it's, there's mustard powder. You could have added mustard powder in with the spices when we added, um, I put that rub in there, mustard powder would have worked great. So we swirl in our brown mustard, little spicy brown mustard there. Cleveland, we call that ballpark mustard. And I'm gonna put in just a little bit of maple. Just because the sweetness will play off the saltiness and a little bit of spice from the rub. We had another fan asking if you could add honey to this. Honey would work great too. Yeah, I mean, any sweetener. Whenever you see something that, a uh, savory dish that has some sweetener in it, typically what they're trying to accomplish is like a sweet, savory situation. So any sweetener that you love, I think will work really well. So even like agave or something agave like that? Agave would work great too. You got it. I'm such a chef. You are, Liv. You are a chef. Liv is learning so much. Liv is, does all of my social. Olivia, so say hi to everybody, Olivia. Hello. <laughs> so, and, uh, um, and she's learning so much about cooking as we go. She is, in the past couple months, she's become a chef, a barista, uh, all these different things. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. Woman of many talents. Woman of many talents. So we're going to take our pork chops, put them right on top. Mm, yeah. And then, you know, we got some of that juice that came out of the pork chop. You don't want to waste that because that's a lot of flavor. So that goes in there. Pork, pork juice. And we are just about there. If you um, are lucky enough to have some fresh herbs uh, that you wanted to kind of finish this with, you could finish this with parsley or cilantro. You know, any of those fresh herbs would work really nice. But that's obviously... Um, kind of like a bonus ingredient. Now, a couple things that I wanna go over real quick as these are just finishing up in the pan. We wanna keep this going and keep the momentum going. So if you guys in the Food Network Kitchen Facebook page, if you post your pictures, that is awesome. We're gonna repost them, comment on them, get really excited about it. If we're also showing this on my Instagram and on Twitter, and on uh, the regular Food Network Facebook page also. So you could also uh, tag at Food Network. And Food Network Kitchen. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And you could also tag at Chef Simon, and you could hashtag Simon Dinners. Um, that's if it's on Instagram and Twitter. If it's on Facebook, um, if, it's on, if it's on Food Network <laughs> Kitchen on Facebook, you could just post your picture and, and we could go from there. And we can still use hashtags on Facebook. We can? And tags. Yeah, we'll still, we'll see that stuff. I'm doing with the social media. Yeah, so I know. That's why, you, that's why you're the <laughs> power player here. The key um, is to tag Food Network Kitchen, tag Chef Simon, 
Hashtag Simon Dinners. Got it. Let's, wait, keep looking at that. I forgot to get a plate. Let's, all right, all right. I mean, guys, I wish you could smell this. It's amazing. Coming back. Look at that beauty. Oh my gosh, a lot of people are asking about the browns. <laughs> of a lot course. Of people are asking about the browns. Always. Um, we're trying our best. Someday, someday. I, Baker Mayfield's gonna do it for us. I know he's gonna. He's gonna bring me happiness someday as a Browns fan. <laughs> I will have happiness as a Browns fan someday, and it's gonna be because of Baker. I got you, Baker. All right. So, poor chap. Forgot my serving utensils today. Better on this side for you. I don't know. It's a nice. What do you guys think? Do you like the other <laughs> side, this side? So What's we, the feedback? We take some of our beans here. Mm. And they're not baked beans. They're like stove top beans. Really quick. And we'll get this nice juicy little pork chop. Put that on top. And we go, oh my god, Michael Simon, the mesh, your presentation. F, F. I mean, guys. F. I'm just going to fire myself. <laughs> oh. Um. I'm going to ruin Liz's good kitchen towel just to make this plate look better. It's actually funny. Someone asked how often you change your uh, kitchen towels. Every single time I cook. <laughs> when you're messy like you are. Every day. Come on, I'm not messy. I just got a little crazy right here. Mm -hmm. Got a knife and a fork. Any other good questions, Liv? Um, would apples be good in this? Apples would be delicious in that. You could put it with the beans or you could put like uh, apples on top just at the end. Would be good too, either way. All right, so just a little thin kind of pork chop here. Cooked all the way through. Still looks real juicy. Some of those beans. Mm. Well. Super yummy. Really yummy. The depth of flavor. Pork chops cooked quick. Remember, I used black beans. You could have used cannellinis. You could have. We have a couple of fans asking if there's a good side with. What should I serve as the side? To me, this is a complete meal. You have a protein, you have protein, you have fiber, you have everything that you want in there. If you want to roast some veggies on the side, completely fine. A little salad on the side, completely fine. But I think you will be shocked um, how filling and satisfying this will be. This is a pretty complete dish. You got vegetables, you got legumes, you got the beans, you got the protein. It's a complete dish. So you don't have to, th especially in these times right now, what's going on right now, don't think, you know, you don't need like, a protein, a starch, a veg. They're all in here, it's just together. And it's gonna be quicker, easier, and you can feed your family no problem. A nice little, if you could go to the store and there's a bunch of lettuces and you wanna do a nice sale with it, totally fine. If there's a lot of vegetables at your store, God bless you, and you could just roast them in the oven with some olive oil, salt, and pepper, totally fine. Maybe tomorrow I'll show you how to, along with uh, the lentils and potatoes we're making tomorrow, maybe I'll also show you just some simple roasted like broccoli or something like that. So it's just an easy preparation for roasted veg for you. Um, but again, guys, my grandfather, Pap says, tough times don't last, tough people do. We are gonna get through this. We're gonna get through it every day. I'm gonna give you a little kind of, let's just chill, have some fun in the kitchen, get food on our table for our family, get away from the stress. We'll get through it together. We always do. I will see you tomorrow at 5 o'clock or whenever you want to watch it after that. Remember too, Food Network Kitchen app, tons and tons and tons of recipes. Hundreds for me, hundreds, thousands from other chefs on the Food Network. So there is tons of information there for you too. Um, but enjoy your dinner. Enjoy your family. Find a little bit more patience for everybody. Share the love. We'll be okay. See you tomorrow.